Wax resist inlay. This is kind of like a version of Scraffito, but um, with the added addition of wax, I can actually fill in those lines that I would carve from Scraffito. So, the first thing I need to do is if I want a base coat, so for example, I have covered this piece here with um, underglaze or decorating slip. A important thing to note, most of what we're using in our studio is um, homemade decorating slip. So it's gonna have a rest of, uh, label some, somewhat like this so you can find the color here. And it's really important because the difference between what I'm making in here, decorating slip, and commercial underglazes, which um, are in the same jars but they'll say underglaze and whatever company they're from, is that the commercial underglazes generally can be applied to both unfired and fired clay. They've been made to be a little bit more flexible and versatile, which is just something that a commercial manufacturer has the ability to do. And then in our studio, because this is a decorating slip, you can use it, you need to use it on unfired clay, so leather hard, so just like how we got our plate in the past. Um, you can, for these types, in these smaller containers that say mason stain decorating slip, you can use them for touch-ups after it's fired, but really you need to plan on relying on getting all your color on there before it is fired. So I've painted my plate here, and really important, I'm done with my jar, please make sure to wipe the rim. Because what's gonna happen is if I don't do that over time, it gets really hard to close it, and then we're gonna end up with a mess on our hands. Um, oftentimes people will try and pick it up by the top, and all of a sudden the top falls off because it wasn't on there, and it's a mess everywhere and a waste of our materials. So please make sure you wipe the rim and then put the top on securely. So for this one, I need to make sure that it's dry before I apply what's called wax resist, also in the same container. So please make sure that you're using the right materials. I did write wax resist on here because this cannot come off your clay unless you scrape it off or before it gets fired in the kiln. So this is wax. It is also hard to get off of your clothes. So always assume that the lid is not on super tight on here because you can't really wipe it off in the same way, otherwise it's stuck to your sponge. And so never pick it up from the lid, always pick it up and hold it securely from the side. And if you're having trouble opening it, please see me so that if anyone makes a spill, it's me um, and not you. So I need to make sure this is dry. Once it's dry, I'm going to take my wax resist. Oh, and the way that I can tell it's dry is that it's not shiny anymore. It's kind of got a matte look to it. This one's almost dry. And then it's super important using my wax resist that I don't use the brushes that are hanging for glaze or underglaze. So use the, the just kind of general use brushes that are in the bathroom. Make sure they're washed. And you can use a large one, a small one, whatever. I'm gonna cover the whole surface of this. And it's important that once I'm done with the wax, I don't just set this aside to dry, to sit because this will dry and get wax all crusted all over it. And it's really difficult to clean later. Basically, I need to kind of boil it clean. So do everyone a favor and um, wash your brush right away. So I'm just gonna paint one layer of this on here. And it doesn't have to be a thick layer, but I do wanna make sure if I'm missing any spots that I go touch it up again. The brush strokes don't matter. This is a temporary material. So this will burn off at around 400 degrees in the kiln. Or because this is unfired, I can also scrape it off, which is exactly what we want to take advantage of here. So I'm being really gentle. I'm not scrubbing really hard because I don't wanna get any of that underglaze starting to lift up. So I actually have started to do that because it was a little wet on the edge here. So don't put it back in here because again, now all of a sudden I have my black underglaze or slip mixing into this clean layer here, right? Luckily I'm pretty much done. So making sure that my lid is on tightly or at least as tight as I can get it, safely putting my wax away, washing my brush. So I've applied my wax and you can see that it's nearly dry. And the way that I can tell is um, when it's not dry, it's this kind of milky white. And then once it is dry, it's just kind of got this nice sheen to it. Um, so when it is dry, I wanna be careful that I don't mess up this area, but when it is dry, I wanna start doing my um, carving. So think about it, thinking about my design, right? Where do I need to carve? I'm gonna leave these and address those perhaps later. Um, but I really wanna think about, on here you can see I have all these little small designs. And so I need to make those marks. So I have a lot of tools to choose from. Just like with Scraffito, the thickness of your tool is gonna to determine how your lines look. For this one, it's just kind of random. So I'm just carving away random scratches. And just like with uh, my Scraffito piece, I wanna leave the crumbs. I don't wanna try and brush them off now because they might stick. 
I can kind of shake them off, right? But just being very careful that I'm not merging them with anything else. The hardest part with something like this, like a continuous line, is I have to take into account the curve of my piece. So that's why I'm working really slowly and kind of methodically, is I wanna make sure that I get a, still a straight line without kind of jumping over any of these divots or anything like that. So sometimes based on the technique that you use, your design is going to change to some degree. So for this one, for example, I could have filled in with white, and I still could if I wanted to carve that away and fill it in, but I'm kind of leaning towards just making these lines. And so while you might want to make a set, right, with the same design on each one, because you're going to be using different techniques, it is important to, to be somewhat flexible, right? So keep the same general theme or design that you're going for, but you might modify some things to fit the technique that you're using. Um, it's important to note that before I did any of this um, slip or carving wax or carving, I made sure that I was done with everything else, right? So I can sign my name later, but if I wanted to add a foot or anything, I should have done that in advance. So in this case, I'm not adding a foot, but that's important to note that the surface is done after the building is done. All right, so I've completed my Scraffito designs on here and I've decided to interpret the white lines here with um, just kind of a lot of line work in that area. And those will be filled in perhaps with white. So just like Scraffito, I have a lot of crumbs here. And so I would use a very dry brush, kind of stiff brush, and I would brush off those crumbs. I'm not gonna get all of it, right? So you are gonna have some sort of rough edges after it's fired, which is similar to Scraffito, and we can sand those down a little bit. It's important that we wet sand them, so just keep that in mind. You can see that in some areas I've lost more color than in others, which sometimes happens if it's, in this case, really close together. I could touch it up or I'm just gonna go for it and say that's fine. So from here, I need to do the next step, which is to inlay it. So I'm gonna go with white. So I'm gonna grab my white decorating slip and this is a little different than the slip that we used for, say, our, um, our pinch pot pieces with the red clay. This is a little bit more refined, which as I mentioned in the previous video or earlier in this one, is I can actually do some touch-ups with this after it's fired. So I'm gonna take this and with my small brush, I'm going to paint over my designs. And you can see, as I'm painting over the wax area, it's Kind of beating up and that's because my decorating slip or my underglaze or my glaze or whatever is water-based but the wax is not i want to dab it on so that i make sure i really get it into those carved areas and if i wanted to use other colors so say i'm going to make this purple i'm just going to leave those for now finish up with my white then i'll come in with the purple and then I'll wipe it all down. So I kind of carry my design a little bit over the edge. So I wanna make sure that I'm getting that as well. So what I would do now is I would fill in my purple, but ultimately the main idea is that I'm then gonna take my sponge, make sure it's not dripping wet, and I just kind of gently dab and wipe. And you can see it's starting to allow me to fill in the lines because I carved all the way through the wax and the decorating slip or underglaze and revealed my clay beneath. And I wanna be careful, since my plate is still a little bit wet, you can see I might be smearing it away. So that's why I usually start by dabbing it, and then I might go wipe it. So I would let this dry a little more before I fully wiped it down. And that is wax resist inlay.